Good morning and a warm welcome to your show, Sunny Mornings in Encinitas. I'm your host, Melissa, and it's Tuesday, March 26th. Coming up on today's show, we'll get into the surf report and the weather outlook. Then we'll jump into some local news and a few interesting happenings in business, tech, and entertainment. But first, you'll be interested to know, 45 years ago, today in 1979, the Israel-Egypt Peace Treaty was signed. Beginning at the Camp David Accords in 1978, under President Carter, Egyptian President Sada, and Israeli Prime Minister Begin, resulted in the first peace treaty between Israel and Egypt. Despite political and negotiation challenges, this landmark agreement marked a high point in the Arab-Israeli peace process during Carter's presidency, with future negotiations encountering significant obstacles. So now you know. And now you know what time it is. It's time for the surf report. Tuesday in Encinitas and North County, it's looking bad at two to three feet most of the day until 6 p.m. when it's fair and rideable for the last hour of sunlight. Get out there for sunset. Best time to ride is at 6 p.m. with the two foot incoming tide when the southwest swell is two feet at seven seconds and the unsure wind is 10 mile per hour. The first high tide Tuesday will be four feet at 10.30 gale with a one foot low tide at 4.30. The nearshore buoy at Scripps in La Jolla reads 60 degrees for the water temperature. Checking out the weather in the Encinitas area. This morning it's cloudy and feels like 54 degrees with five mile per hour wind. The sunset will take place at 7.04 and it will rise again tomorrow at 6.42. It looks like we're in for a slight chance of showers before 11 a.m., then gradually becoming mostly sunny with a high near 61 and wind of 10 to 15 mile per hour. Chance of precipitation is 20%. Tonight, partly cloudy with a low around 53. Looking ahead in the weather, Wednesday will be mostly sunny with a high near 62 degrees. Thursday is partly sunny, maintaining a high of 62. By Friday, expect mostly sunny skies with a slight cool to 61 degrees. Rain chances arise late Friday night with a low around 55. Saturday forecasts rain after 11 a.m. under mostly cloudy conditions with high steady at 61 degrees. Bonjour, food enthusiasts. This podcast is brought to you by Versailles Cafe and Pastries in Encinitas. Nestled on El Camino Real South, just north of Encinitas Boulevard, this cafe is a haven for culinary delights. Indulge in their amazing Eggs Benedict or their gluten-free crepes. You can grab a panini for lunch or just breeze on through to get your morning coffee. They are open every day from eight to five. So stop on by and don't forget to tell them, Sunny Morning send you. In local news, the Gallagher Square at Peco Park recently underwent a $20 million renovation, prominently featuring the Tony Gwynn Terrace. This renovation celebrates Tony Gwynn's legacy and includes a walkway linking Gwynn's statue to Trevor Hoffman's and is adorned with crushed red tiles symbolizing baseball stitches. The space aims to educate new generations about Gwynn's impact on and off the field featuring murals of his career achievements. Additional renovations include tiered lawn seating, a new entry gate, enhanced video boards, a relocated kids' ball field, and a dog park. Gallagher Square also serves as a concert venue and public space, with an event planned this Thursday for watching San Diego State's Sweet 16 showdown against Yukon. I can't wait to visit. Now on to sports. 
The Connecticut men's basketball team advanced to the Sweet 16, dominating Northwestern with a 75-58 win. Their quest for back-to-back -back national titles continues as they face San Diego State next. UConn's impressive streak includes 29 non-conference wins by double digits, showcasing their dominance. Despite a poor three-point shooting performance, they dominated inside, with key players Tristan Newton, Cam Spencer, and Donovan Klingen leading the scoring. Klingen notably achieved a 14-14 double-double with eight blocks. UConn's comprehensive strategy has them poised for potential championship success. Reminiscent of Florida's back-to-back -back titles in 2006 and 2007. Last night in local sports, the Clippers at home lost to the Pacers 133 to 116. And the Kings on the road beat the Knucks 3 to 2. Tonight, the Lakers are on the road in Milwaukee to take on the Bucks. In top news, targeting belly fat specifically for weight loss is largely a myth. Our bodies decide where to store and lose fat based on factors beyond our control, such as genetics and biological sex. Although visceral fat, which accumulates around the abdomen, poses health risks, the strategies to reduce it aren't localized, but rather impact the whole body. Weight loss through a calorie deficit and regular exercise, including high-intensity interval training, can reduce overall body fat including abdominal fat. However, no diet or exercise plan can promise to target belly fat exclusively. The variability in body fat distribution is natural and largely predetermined, making generalized weight loss the most effective approach. In business news, the U.S. Treasury market, the world's largest financial market, is expanding rapidly, raising concerns among investors about potential instability. With annual U.S. Treasury issuance nearly doubling since the pandemic, the market grew to $27 trillion by 2023. This growth is driven by the government's need to finance deficits through bond issuance, amidst expectations of continued government spending increases. The market's expansion and regulatory changes could pose challenges, including potential cash shortages similar to those in 2019 and 2020. The shift towards more short-term debt and the changing landscape of treasury buyers, including reduced bank purchases due to regulatory constraints, are notable trends. Despite these challenges, demand for treasuries remains strong, partly due to limited alternatives in the bond market. The role of foreign investors, especially from Japan, remains significant, though changing global financial conditions could affect their participation. In crypto movement, Bitcoin is now over $70,000. Ethereum is at $3,600. And Solana is nearing $200. Moving on to a more local vibe. In our community spotlight on health and wellness, we are working with a national Pilates studio to bring you some free classes, so listen up. Check out Club Pilates with several locations in the San Diego area. Pilates presents a comprehensive wellness approach, cultivating strength, reducing tension, and elevating mental well-being. Scientific research affirms its benefits. So now you can check out Club Pilates for a free class with locations in Encinitas, Solana Beach, Oceanside, La Jolla, and more. Just be sure to tell them Sunny Morning sent you by. And now back to the show. Let's talk tech. Nissan has updated its electrification strategy, aiming to electrify 16 out of 30 vehicles by 2026 signaling a shift towards more sustainable transportation. While specifics on the all-electric versus hybrid mix remain unclear, the U.S. market can expect seven new models, including e-power and plug-in hybrids. 
This move marks the progression from Nissan's 2021 promise, though comparisons are challenging without detailed vehicle classifications. Additionally, Nissan anticipates 60% of its global portfolio to be electrified by 2030, increasing the total to 34 vehicles. Amidst these plans, Nissan seems to be recalibrating its ambitions regarding all solid-state battery technology, now targeting a broader range of battery innovations by 2028. And in entertainment news, the girl with the dragon tattoo is rebooting with a TV series at Amazon and GM Studios and is making progress with showrunner Vina Sud expressing her enthusiasm for adapting Stieg Larsson's iconic novels for television. The series aims to introduce a new incarnation of Lisbeth Salander, showcasing a woman who defies societal norms. While details remain sparse, this standalone story promises to bring a fresh perspective to this celebrated Millennium Trilogy, which has already inspired multiple film adaptations. Well, alrighty folks, it's time for the quote of the day. And today, our quote comes from Jimmy Carter. The 39th president of the United States said, it is good to realize that if love and peace can prevail on earth, and if we can teach our children to honor nature's gifts, the joys and beauties of the outdoors will be here forever. And that's a wrap for this morning. Remember to stay tuned tomorrow for more news and updates. Have an amazing day, my good friends. Okay.